Welcome to Screen Time. Today I'd like to introduce you to a movie that uh, should be coming to um, home viewing platforms, uh, either right now or in the near future. It's called Cold War. It's a Polish film in the Polish language, most uh, for the most part, and it's directed by Paweł Pawlikowski, a uh, Polish native who uh, worked initially uh, in feature films in the UK, making uh, such works as uh, My Summer of Love, and then um, working back in Poland, uh, making um, specifically the film Ida, which uh, was a big uh, success in art houses and with critics, and uh, went on to win the, uh, the Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film. And now, Cold War. Dwa serduszka, cztery oczy Ojojo Co płakały we dnie w nocy Ojojo Now there will be likely few films this year that offer quite so much cinematic talent, artistic beauty and intriguing history in so short a space of time, under 90 minutes, as Cold War does. It's a post-World War II love story using black and white photography captured in a square frame rather than widescreen to tell a tale that looks beyond mere romance to encompass changing trends in societal politics across various European nations accompanied by music and dance that ranges from earthy folk traditions to coolly sophisticated jazz. Now the two key figures in this saga are singer-dancer Zula, Joanna Kulig, and musician-composer Victor Tomasz Kot. It is a measure of the distinct style brought to this film by its Polish-born UK-trained writer-director Paweł Pawlikowski that the characters' names seem barely even spoken in the course of the film. And adding to the unusual feel of Cold War is the strategy taken with editing. Jumps in time are given intertitles to orientate us, but are generally also prefaced by a hard cut to black followed by brief silence. Now, most of these jumps also leave out a good deal of connecting information, leaving the audience to fill in a lot of gaps. Now, many art house patrons will relish this kind of opportunity to apply their own imagination, intelligence, and empathy to a film, while some audiences may find it a bit frustrating. Now, Kulig and Cott have both been smartly cast for their striking looks and magnetic screen presence, uh, Kulig may remind you of both Lee Ullman and Jennifer Lawrence, but to this reviewer, they each tend towards remaining stubbornly close to blank slates as people. This doesn't necessarily mean that we find ourselves uncaring towards the progress of their relationship, but the style that Pavlikovsky has chosen seems to put us at a remove from his protagonists. The few brief striking interludes of overtly emotional, physical passions that we witness are largely muted by the predominantly precise framing, elliptical storytelling and literal lack of colour. Cold War offers all-around quality, ambition and intelligence and manages to feel well above satisfactory on the surface. All of those who cherish the side of this director that produced a tale of romance as involving and vividly human as his contemporary UK set, My Summer of Love, may, however, have to fight a feeling of slight disappointment. Perhaps the healthy box office and prestigious awards enjoyed by his other Polish production, Nun's Tale, Eda, made it simply too tempting for Pawlikowski to resist repeating so many of that film's stylistic hallmarks. A square black and white image, brief running time, historical setting, and emotional reserve. On the other hand, it's probably unfair to view the filmmaker's intentions cynically, as Cold War is dedicated to Pawlikowski's parents, whose own history is said to have inspired the screenplay. Considering the nature of the movie's ending, which definitely has the means to surprise, to linger, and to haunt, this information adds another layer of intrigue to the historical, romantic tapestry on display, making Cold War, despite my reservations, a rich and striking journey that is worth taking.
Thanks very much for joining us. See you next time.